How's it going? Um, I just found out a couple of minutes ago that I'm doing a uh, longer slide than I'd planned. <coughs> well, sort of, sort of. Anyway, my, um, my talk today is going to be about package management. Um, I'm not talking about what you think I'm talking about. Um, the, the current problem I, I use a little uh, graph viz script to generate this. Um, so you'd have the root directory up here, like um, in this case I'm using the dev C++ IDE, it's a rather popular uh, project on SourceForge that's been maintained for like five years, but still. Um, and, and the source tree, and it's just completely out of proportion, um, the, the sheer amount of folders that are involved um, in, in any large scale project. Um, um, you've got all the file hierarchy, um, especially on Linux, where it's very, um, you have to ad adhere to whatever standard we're using now. Um, and the average user isn't really aware of it. They're like, what's the C drive? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and the solution is um, packages. So um, originally they're like, um, you can see the more zip and the tar type file, uh, um, type archive, and um, it's, it's much more professional to use MSI, RPMs, DEBs, um, whatever, um, for whichever uh, operating system you're using. So, um, um, for instance, in fact, I'll just bring up a little project. Don't you love it when technology just works? I'm using everyone's favorite operating system. I think this is it, the new the new version of it. <laughs> it's it um it's it's they're not, they're not using pseudo. They're trying to mount it without pseudo. Finally. I'm gonna say it's corrupted and there goes all the way. Oh, not responding. Oh, isn't that great? Look what I'm about to bring up. Task manager. Oh, yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> yeah, fuck this. <laughs> 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 okay, um, you gotta love the resolution. Um, Dave over there is, is a big fan of VMware, so <laughs> I'll just show him all the great features of that if I can ever learn to use it. Why is it moving to the side? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, um, don't you love what Dell did with this? Um, I just bought this laptop a few days ago, and already they, they put in a OS X dock that's a little bit different, just so they don't get sued. Um, hey, I think it finally worked. Hey, that's great. It's not responding again. I guess they don't like slug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, six gig of RAM isn't enough for this. Set priority real time, yeah. Yeah. Watch it fail. Killing the X server, yeah. <laughs> I can't even see the task, um, uh, the alt tab thing. What, what am I? What am I switching to? Let's hope it's back to that slide. This is control alt delete. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. And um, you might have remembered that I was that I had about like ten app, um, ten applications open. Um, where do they go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really tempted to just restart this computer. Th th this is epically failing. I had slides. Um, um, I had a half-maintained version of my USB, but it's, yeah, NTFS, um, fat, fat, sure, <laughs> or X fat. That might be the one with one slide, but, yeah, I did a little teaser to, to annoy Dave. See if it's loaded this time. Starting Windows. Oh, that's great. No, no, the, uh, it has two partitions. Uh, Slides.odp. But it might not. It might be the one slide version. Yeah, that's right. Windows 7 is taking over. They don't make updates for Microsoft anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was afraid about that. Of that. Anyway, now that it's rebooted, my. Um, Probably. Um, you passed the USB. Yeah. Thanks. When you do a boot like that, you'll never be able to get the time right on the um, file. So it will get. True, true. But, um. No. Right.
I, I remember my old Hackintosh was always like three days, um, 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 reset the system clock so it'd be three days ahead. I just get so confused. I had a lot of late assignments. <laughs> it is, it is. My dog ate my bootloader. <laughs> hey, what a great wallpaper. So this is the cursor. It, you Linux people might not have seen one of these. Okay, so I just wanted to, before I was really interrupted by Windows failing, uh, <laughs> uh, quickly show you what, um, what, what a general uh, project um, I'd work on would look like. Um, I mainly maintain IDEs, so it's both I'm at uni and all the IDE packages we use are horribly out of date or non-existent in this sense. So um, the general package would look something like this. Um, it's XML-like code. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory what it does in this case. Um, but if I scroll down to something good, I yes, it, it, um, uh, this is the equivalent of the include file. Um, and I generated this using some sed scripts through Sigwin, everyone's favorite Linux equivalent. Got that in. Um, you got like the uh, non-advertised shortcuts. Um, not, not sure if anyone here administers Windows. Anyone? No. Okay, I'll skip over that. <laughs> um, um, I used to compile it. Um, I'm using a preprocessor from uh, called Make MSI by Dennis Barius. Um, it's, it's, as far as I know, it's um, BOSS, um, but it doesn't have a license, which is pretty weird. Um, so I guess he gets everything that I wrote. He follows in the Microsoft tradition. And um, onto the slides, back to the slides. Um, has anyone heard of Inno Setup? No? No. Um, the main advantage <laughs> to the, the scripts that I just used was um, MSIs are used in most businesses, uh, most Windows-based businesses to update and deploy software across like a range of trees and forests. Um, um, and it's a very simple tool to use once you've, once you've uh, generated the initial file, file list. Um, um, Last last uh, month, I, I got a request asking um, how to create your own pro uh, rep uh, repositories. Um, I had a little Linux demo set up. Let's hope that the drives haven't corrupted because of the forced reboot. <laughs> Sure, sure. It. You can put it on YouTube and watch it, and, and so everyone can see me die on stage. Oh, 
Let me see. It's nice line. No, it took forever. Where is my fuck? Disappear. I want to click terminal. Oh, yeah, there. Wait, am I in a pseudo shell? Empty. Oh. oh yeah, yeah. Watch this. Watch this. I'm using a file explorer. Graphical. Oh, now it gives me what. I so I'm um, in the in the repository. I. I added a um, uh, this this GZ file, which um, so anyone browsing into my repository can actually see a list of of um, files that I'm I'm offering, and um, I'll I'll post on the wiki later uh, exact thing on on how I create them. I had a slide before, but it crashed when the computer corrupted. Yeah. Um, Yeah, um, most of my talk was on the Windows side of it, but since no one seems to be interested in using FOSS to create packages on Windows, I think um, I think I'll uh, leave it there. Any questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's um, there's equivalence, and there's also uh, Sigwin, which which you just like um, compile. Um, there are equivalents, but it's usually it, it's it's rarely um, completely recreated. It's usually just an exe with a sigwin DLL. Oh, I, really? Yeah, no, no, there are Windows GUIs for Git, but um, I thought like command line, like usually usually they just cheat and use a DLL. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it has it has the same features. Um, I had a look at Winget. It was it was so out of date and no one used it. Um, it also was a bit clunky. I couldn't even get the test. Yeah, I couldn't get the test either. Yeah, I, I think it was more of like a maybe a university test project, and and they tried to make it work, and they probably got like failed for their test project. And just kept just kept the website up. up. Yeah. Um. Any other questions? Um, um, I'm usually looking after oh, um, that people know about or normal. <laughs> um. I'm, I'm at university now, but before I was managing, I think it was like 250 servers across Australia and New Zealand. The servers all operated on uh, about, they were small servers, they operated about 15 people, so do the math. And, and that was that was interesting. I, um, I almost made 
all my co-workers redundant. So, it's a bit <laughs> risky. Thank you, Mum. Heard of anybody from surreptitiously getting their hands on uh, one of those source codes and uh, using it to get other source codes? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, um, you're talking about the academic kernel or the normal kernel? Well, I'm, I'm, I know that there's only two. Um, no, no, it's, it's the same kernel, but it's like they took out a lot of stuff. Um, it, uh, Microsoft made available to a few universities under academic license. Um, so that you can run uh, Wine stuff better at the university. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but it, it's really... I, I'm pretty sure already with Wine you can just choose to use the Windows DLL. Yeah, but but they're pretty easy to get. Is there a way to use Wine with a Windows install? Um, for what purpose? So then you've got all the DLLs and all the things all there. Could it be that you were just made up? Yeah, you just copy it and 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 create your own repo, uh, uh, your own distro. If you could do a boot, if you could do a boot, you could copy and say, um, SDE four is the uh, you know the Windows two one, and then just use it. Oh uh, yeah, you should be able to. Um, I haven't experimented too heavily with Wine uh, DLLs, but um. Um, as, as long as you as long as you set up auto mounting, it should work fine. I've heard of it. I had I didn't research it too heavily. Yeah, they they have included um, whatever it's called, power power. Yeah, PowerShell. And, and that includes a lot of features, but compared to Seaglim, it's just, yeah. Um, <coughs> Zeke, I should do um, viewing um, stuff for Windows that Microsoft provides um, and allows you to run uh, NFS on the Windows, on the NFS client? I, I had a look at... I had a look at the Unix file system, and on the subject of package management, they're using a um, illegal version of WinZip to, to to package the Unix subsystem tools, and it's still available from Microsoft's site to download. And they're using terrible package management, even though Microsoft actually invented MSI and and all these other standards in package management, and they're just <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. MSI is the Windows installer format. It's um, it's an it's in XML. Um, I can show you. Yeah. Microsoft System Installer. Or a DB. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's um, um, there's a lot of bad practices, especially in Windows. Um, if if um, any package that I post online, like I've got a source watch page and all that, um, I keep complete, like perfect, make sure that the uninstall works properly. I have all these monitoring programs to, to check the use of resources and yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I can launch one if you want. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it does have dependency checks, but unlike NSYS, which is made by Winamp, which is under GNU, um, it doesn't have a, a download update feature, like, so to check if this DLL exists, if it doesn't, download it. Um, I don't know why they didn't include it, it's such a inherent thing. If I ever have the time, I'll write a plugin for it. Um, Here's just an example, if you haven't seen one before. Sure. And I was complaining before about having too many, too much of a file hierarchy. Look at this. Do you run BSD or Linux now? Oh, seriously? Oh, yeah, yeah. They've got the whole App Store thing, and you can only get things from there. It's ridiculous. The whole court case. Yeah, d don't upgrade to iOS 4. Um, and yeah, the latest one was a PDF uh, vulnerability and 4.0.2. I, I don't have an I don't have an iPhone. I've got an actual phone. So. Yeah, yeah, it's dependencies. Um, you, you might have noticed before that there was a little dependency dialog that opened saying you have to have Java Development Kit 1.5 installed. Uh, the reason it's asking for that is I had like I had a few versions that included Java, and um, the sysadmin at uni ask for it not to because they've got a very out-of-date version of Java that they like to maintain as out-of-date, 
instead of allowing me to get it the latest version. Macquarie. So if anyone's looking to have, um, if anyone has a bit of spare time, just open up, open up your terminal and have a go at the Macquarie web server. As it were. <laughs> <laughs> IIS. <laughs> um, yeah, I think they should just um, even ev even a little test like that would be would be um, out of their scope. I, I don't think they they have the knowledge to test. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, um, Let's quickly show you uh, GraphViz. It's um, an open source graphing software. Not sure if you've heard of it. It's cross-platform. Um, I'll show you the web page for it on Internet Explorer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm. In fact, I'm downloading BSD, or I was until the internet dropped out. Um, um, I talked to my old TAFE teacher, and, and in fact, in TAFE class, um, we have we have this crazy teacher. We had this crazy teacher at TAFE, beard, like old guy. He just knew everything, um, and he said that if you don't agree with the Microsoft terms and conditions, you can ring up, and they have to refund it. Um, What? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, no, no. Um, Ultima. 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 So, um, Graph is a software mainly used like networking, uh, network diagrams, um, for instance. Yeah, we don't want that. That was, um, what was that, the SVG? Because um, Internet Explorer sucks. And I don't know why I'm using it. Um, for instance, it, this is a nice little graph. I do, I do, but I got a session. Oh wait, I actually don't. Have, this is a new laptop. I don't have too many tabs. Yeah. I, I usually maintain six or uh, five or six different browsers, each for my different sessions. And I, I know you're saying, oh, why don't you just start a new session and use Session Manager to save your old ones? I like having everything open. So at, at one time I'd have maybe six browsers, um, five or six browsers open, between them, 600 tabs. I, yeah. I heard also with Chrome that you can use incogni incognito mode to create free sessions, two or three sessions, is that? Right. 
So, um, I wrote this little thing in .NET, just because I didn't have time to, 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 um, prop <laughs> to, to code properly. Um, <laughs> so, so, um, here's the file structure. And you see, it's it's in a scalable vector graphics, and and it's pretty much useless on something of of any real size, unless you've got one of those um, old ream printers where you can um, the roller, you know, like faxes used to have. Yeah, yeah, factor fee. Before my time. <laughs> um, and. Um, I I heard also solid ink printers. Um, um, if you like, uh, you can get them pretty cheap, and the ink cost bucket loads, but there's ink included with them. So if you just, um, I don't know who sells them. I haven't looked into it too far, but um, solid ink printers are like the best best quality that that you could want for like photos and and pit, pictures. Solid ink, like. Proper like paint, like oh no 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 um like charcoal charcoal. Um, what else was I gonna show? I didn't know people at Slug were gonna be so anti Windows package management. Yeah, I I do have um. Oh no, no, definitely not. But um, um, it took them a long time to get um to get an equivalent to a SAS server. Now they do, and it's much better than SAS. Um, you, you used to deploy um updates and applications across an enterprise. Nothing SAS, yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, I I did it to learn. I had like. 10, 10 virtual machines up, all with like what, two, 250 mega RAM. And yeah, yeah, and you got it like so. Um, you're talking about the Pacman.exe. Oh, the Gentoo one. Um, I haven't looked into it too closely. Yeah, um, a, a big problem I find with Linux, which is actually, um, um, which is actually good for for a lot of things, is dependencies. Often I'm trying to install something, I might find a, a .db on debian.org packages, and I'm running Ubuntu, and I just want to install it. It says you need these dependencies. So it's like, okay, give me an option to download those dependencies from the Ubuntu server. And they don't give me an option to, so I need to go by a HTTP. I'm sure there are quicker ways that Dave could tell me about. And you, you just spend hours creating the dependency list yourself, because you you download it directly from packages that are bind to, and it says you need this package to install it. It's like it's yeah, available. it is available, but they don't allow you to um, um the dependency of the the GUI the what is it GTK doesn't doesn't um, allow you to download the dependencies.
Okay, I, I wasn't aware of that one, but it, it sounds like it'll work. Um, but why isn't why isn't uh, dependency downloading and installing option built into the GUI? I'm about half a year ago. I planned to learn like properly the entire Debian like maintainers guide. It was like what crazy amount of pages, and I and I started on it and I started learning. I created a little deb and I was just working out different things. And I was like, oh, here I've just I've just packaged this 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 new app. Um, can you just put it on your service? And they're like, no. Talk to me in two years. Or something you have to ha you have to go through like a mentor system it's yeah it's, yeah and if, if if you're trying to get into professional package management you really need access to all the all the major repositories yeah but um, even Ubuntu is, is difficult to you you can do Launchpad, and you can you can do GitHub, and you can run your own run your own um, repositories. But um, to get someone, yeah. But otherwise, you need to edit your sources list, and that's not user friendly to your audience. That was the was some full version last time I checked. No, no, like where you could where you could view the in, entire entire um, guide in one page. Yeah, that'll just link me back to where I was. Anyways, um, have, has anyone here heard of Processor? It's um, last semester at my university, we were introduced to a programming language called Processing. It's um, Um, it's some Dell feature. I, I literally got this laptop yesterday. I haven't had a chance to uninstall Windows. <laughs> I I usually um, install Windows and everything else into VMware inside a Linux session just because Linux does does it much better. It's um, this is my first time really using Windows. Seven. It's clunky. It feels clunky. Um, Processing is um, a programming language. Um, it's basically a abstraction layer over Java, and and they've got some very um, useful features. Oh, they've got some very useful features, um, and it's especially good for learning. Um, you wouldn't really use it in an enterprise environment, but um, for instance, let's just run this test app. So you've got some, you've got a very small amount of code. Um, whoa, what? What's going on with the texting? Is it a, is it a uh, JavaScript problem? 
Void space thing. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, I'm just trying on a different application that does the same thing. Yeah, I had a test case up before, but but I lost the slide and and I couldn't um, I couldn't get the VMware thing to work properly. So for instance, really, it's really easy to write code on this. Um, probably too easy. We're finally getting a oh, semicolon. So look at the tail. Um, but it's really simple to, to code on it when it when it works. It works quite efficiently. Um, these are a bunch of macros that interface with the uh, um, with the p image library, p image, and I forget what the other library is, like p sketch or something, and it makes it just really easy to code. Um, you could probably teach like someone in primary school how to do this. Um, it was it was taught at our university. Some people say that it worked. Some people say it didn't. Um, we're now using C++, we're using dev C++, which is crap because it hasn't been maintained for five years. So I've started up a little, pro, a little project to start maintaining it again. Um, and it's, it's going okay. Um, I'm planning to package um, it with Darwin on Mac and and on Linux I'll just put in a thing for a dependency. Apparently Mac doesn't support dependencies yet. Yeah, but that's then you get massive packages. Well, you don't have to worry about dependencies because it's been maintained for five years. But what if and you don't have to worry about dependencies because it's been maintained for five years? Yeah, but if you have to worry about dependencies because it's been maintained for five years, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's been performing less than thirteen versions of Java for five years. Great, great. Uh, everyone, there's pizza. I hope you <laughs> hope you enjoyed my talk. <laughs>